Spice, what's up, girl? Hi, Wagwan, Wagwan. Thank you guys so much for having me. Ooh, I like the song with the tape measure and the little inferences <laughs> we make into length and girth. Yes, girl, we, we, uh -huh. we need that for the summer, for the fall. We love it. <laughs> Never Maybe. leave home without a tape measure. So you won't be disappointed. <laughs> See, I was, I'm like, I don't have a tape measure like on hand. I use the hand, like one potato, two potato, three potato, but a tape measure is mm -hmm. more plastic. <laughs> How you okay. feeling tonight, Spice? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm feeling excited. I have the number one um, reggae albums on the iTunes USA chart, also on the UK chart. I'm feeling elated. I'm excited. Go, girl. Yes. So, so you're excited and we are too. But before we get started, you issued an apology to men because you know, maybe some of them weren't too excited about the release of your music video tape measure. Um, they weren't, they you, weren't at all. Um, well, most of them was coming out, you know, that, you know, some of them don't have what we expect. And so now that the ladies are going to check, they're a little bit disappointed. So they were like, one of them in particular woke up in the morning after my video shoots and they were like, good morning to everyone except Spice. I, so I know that oh, there's... Wow. <laughs> But what uh, about your so many, The ladies was teasing a lot of them and saying, oh, when we get home, we want to know what number you are on the measure. So it's a whole the movement. So I issued an apology, you know, to the men. And I was like, you know, if you don't fit any particular number on the tape measure, just wait until it's your season, <laughs> which will never come. But, you uh -huh. know. I love it, but you know what's funny? They can make a million songs about our butt sizes, mm -hmm. our bust, our every every single part of a woman is broken down and put a number on it. But yes. one little song about the tape measure got them in their feelings. I love it. Uh, yes. so. Let's talk yeah. about it. Yeah, I know that's right. I'm here for it. Um, and speaking of tape measure and accolades, let's talk about this album, Emancipated, that's topping the charts not just on the two charts that you that you spoke of, but worldwide. Let's just break Girl, it down a little bit. Currently the number one album in the world, number one reggae album in the world, number one on the UK reggae iTunes chart, number one on the US reggae iTunes chart, the number one best-selling international album on Amazon, and number one in Jamaica on Apple Music. Hello, somebody. First of all, congratulations, Black yeah. Beautiful Queen. Thank I just you so know much. What is it like to see your hard work pay off, Spice? Oh, my God. I, I feel gleeful. I'm elated. And to be honest, this album is called Emancipated because for the past 10 years, I've been locked up in a deal with my record label and I couldn't seem to get mm. out of it. I released a project called Captured because that's exactly how I felt, like I was captured for 10 years in this record label. There's this ongoing feud that we had. But now that I'm out of the label, I decided to call it Emancipated because this is how I feel, like I'm emancipated. And my fans, who I call my besties, they have journeyed with me. And now that I'm free and independent and doing this on my own, after 10 years, 10 years is a long time. It's like a decade tied up. So now that I'm free, I think the name of the project explains exactly how I feel. I'm really, really just happy and you know, humbled and grateful to be here saying that, oh my God, I'm an independent artist. I'm free again. That's really how I feel. Awesome. awesome. So Emancipated is a celebration of your freedom and not only yes. as an artist, but as a mother. Yes. As an entrepreneur, as a woman. So yes. take us on your journey a little bit, you know, tell us about the journey. Oh, do we have time for me to take you on my journey? <laughs> Short it up in the clip bit. notes, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I came. I come from a community called Old Bracelet in Portmore. That's in a Jamaica. So we got the whole of Jamaica. Um, I started when I was pretty young. My father used to play a lot of Bob Marley song in the house, and that's where I kind of discovered my love for music. He died of unfortunately when I was only nine years old. But when he was here with me, he used to boast to all of his friends, "My daughter can sing. My daughter gonna become a star." Listen to my daughter, and he used to play a lot of Bob Marley and Professor Nut song. He used to say to me if you sing the song i'm gonna give you extra dumpling and i love dumplings i used to sing for food i used to sing for food in the house and after he died my world came crushing but because it's like a promise because he was living that moment that i'm gonna be a singer i took on that journey on my own and i started fighting become to become a star and I got the opportunity to perform at a big festival called Sting Festival, where I went on that stage and I um, performed for the first time when I was a teenager. And I got called back like 
four to five times. I ripped the place apart. I met Bounty Killer, who is a um, part of Dance Hall, and he was the first artist to hand me a microphone. I never looked back since. I just kept going. I got my first hit song when in 2003 called Me Is a Girl, Men a Fight Over Man. It's still an anthem in a dance hall right now. And in 2009, I did Ramping Trap with Vibes Cartel. I climbed up the ladder right there so internationally, and I just never stopped. Right now, I'm the Grammy nominated queen. I'm the first hardcore female dance hall artist to ever be nominated for a Grammy. So my journey is long. I kind of shorten it, but I went, I went through a lot and I'm just here now celebrating all the seeds that I've planted. Well, let me okay. tell you this, girl, because it was your accent that just captured me. I didn't hear okay. one damn thing you said, but it sounded <laughs> good. <laughs> Watch me now. <laughs> I heard everything. Fantastic. Just, I, I love her energy and, and, and just her drive for success. For a second there, you almost got me and Lisa Ray to crying because we're such daddy girls and you got to talking about your dad being your drive. Uh, behind your success. But you told Dance Hall Magazine that as a mother, I am totally a different person. When I'm home, I cook, I clean, I take good care of my babies. Um, I sing church songs. Um, yeah. But then when I go on stage, I'm a totally different person, which we can see that, you know, the accent came out, you know, all the love for entertainment. How do you balance being everything for everybody do you find it to be difficult or do you enjoy the journey it's extremely difficult um you know i enjoy being the persona spice which is that person that comes out on stage and i also enjoy being a mother i tell people all the time it's two different person uh -huh. they don't understand it but spice is just a persona that i take on on stage when i get off stage i'm back to being grace and grace is just that humble girl who is singing the church songs taking care of the kids and I don't play my music around my kids or my daughter. I grow them up, you know, nice. I teach them to speak proper and groom them. My daughter is 11 years old. My son just turned 15 a few days ago, Leo oh, Gang. Yeah. Um, so I'm just that, you know, homebody type of girl, just home cooking my rice and peas and chicken and a little okay. and, you know. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. You cook, you know how to cook all that? Of course. Okay. Okay. Coming over, girl. The best. <laughs> I'm the best at it too. <laughs> Ain't nobody can cook rice and peas oh, better than me, my love. So you you knew how to do oxtails too? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you, in you in Atlanta? Yes. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, I'm coming there this weekend. I'm going to call you. Okay. Okay. 